I get asked frequently through internet discussion forums and emails about what's the best way to make a pinhole for a pinhole camera. And one of the answers is that it doesn't really matter. In some degree it doesn't because any hole that you make will make an image. The question really comes down to do you desire to optimize the size of the hole for the focal length used? It is your desire to create as sharp of an image as possible? I think that's a different kind of a question from um, merely being able to make a pinhole of any kind. It's not all that difficult to create good pinholes and that's what I want to do is show how easy it is to craft uh, good pinholes using simple technique that anybody can employ. So keep in mind when we're making pinholes that there is an optimal diameter of pinhole for every camera's focal length that will give you the optimal balance between the geometric uh, projection of the image and diffraction that occurs when the pinhole becomes too small. So you have to know the focal length of your camera in millimeters and then you have to reference the formulas that are available either in books or online on the pinhole calculator uh, sites to tell you what the approximate size of your pinhole is. Keep in mind that it's not entirely necessary to get your pinhole the exact diameter. Um, close is good enough. Um, it, it's an analog function. If you're the further away you are from the ideal pinhole on the wide side the softer the image will be but also the faster your exposures will be. On the other hand if you're too small uh, you actually can get improved sharpness if you're doing close-up imaging but on the other hand your exposures get longer and uh, with the really slow paper media that I use you don't want to get too long of an exposure because then the camera movement uh, for instance your tripod or the ground that the tripod is sitting on or wind uh, all that can cause vibration and movement of the camera that can contribute to the blurring of the image so there is a balance between having um, a sharp pinhole due to the size of it and too sharp of a pinhole having too long of an exposure time and getting blurring just due to the time. So knowing your pinhole size we want to target uh, the pinhole size when we drill a hole. So for the pinhole cameras that I'm making for this project which are made out of black 35 millimeter film canisters my focal length is on average about 27 millimeters. Now it's going to be a curved film plane and so it goes from 30 millimeters in the middle out to 25 millimeters on the edges of the uh, of the paper. So I'm averaging about 27 millimeter is the focal length and so as per the Mr. Pinhole calculator on the website um, it's going to call for about a 0.219 millimeter diameter. Anything around 0.2 is going to be good enough which is about f120, f123. So if you take the 0.219 and, and invert it it's going to be four and a half diameters approximately is how we're going to measure that pinhole diameter. In other words we're going to use our millimeter scale and we're going to hold the piece of brass up against the back of the millimeter scale so the pinhole is peeking out along those graduation marks and using our magnifying loop we're going to measure how many diameters I can fit between two of those millimeter marks and that's how we're going to measure the size of the pinhole. So to make our pinholes we're of course going to need our little piece of brass that we've marked with the center line in it. We're going to need our piece of 600 grit emery paper. We're going to need our sewing needle mounted to a little wooden dowel as a handle. And we're going to need a metal scale that is calibrated in millimeters. And of course we're going to need a loop, a magnifying loop. This is like a slide viewer, negative viewer kind of magnifying loop. Works pretty good. So with those tools we should be able to make our pinhole. Well I start with this two mil thick sheet brass. That's not two millimeters, that's two mils, two one thousandths of an inch. 
and I want to make three quarter inch squares for my pinholes. I have this paper cutter and this metal edge along the paper cutter happens to be three quarters of an inch wide. So I'm able to put the sheet metal along the edge, stabilize it with a straight edge so it doesn't slip, and keeping your fingers out of the way, you make a three quarter inch wide strip of brass. Then you can take each piece of that and make three quarter inch squares of brass for our pinholes. So then I take um, a set of sewing needles and I choose a one of the smaller size needles and I mount it into this the end of a wooden dowel and that makes a little tool that I can use um, to manipulate the pin, the needle, for making my pinholes. So you'll notice there is a slight curve to each piece and that curve is going to be toward the outside of the pinhole and you'll see why in a minute. So on the back side of the pinhole, which is the concave side, I want to find the approximate middle or the center of that piece and so I'm just going to use uh, some lines. I'm using a mechanical pencil. I found a mechanical pencil works pretty good for drawing on sheet brass. It leaves a very nice line. Um, you'll find it's difficult to use ink. Even Sharpie markers don't really work all that well on brass, but for some reason this mechanical pencil lead works really well. So there's my center of my sheet brass. Okay, so I'm going to press the needle against the middle of the X that I've made. And I'm going to rotate the needle back and forth uh, against a fairly medium soft surface. And I want to rotate it until I make a dimple and a very small hole in the brass. So this is the dimple side, which is the front side of the pinhole. And you can see that we have some um, burrs sticking out along the edge of the pinhole there. Now we're, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to sand down those burrs. Okay, I'm going to take our piece of emery, 600 grit emery, and I'm going to take the pinhole and I'm going to, with the dimple side down, or, that is the burr side down, I'm going to do a series of figure eights on the emery paper. And you can maybe see that I'm making a little figure eight marks on the paper itself. So this is the dimple side up and we've now sanded down all of the burrs around the pinhole so it looks smooth. Now we're going to give it an initial measurement. So what I have here is I have a millimeter scale. I have a loop and I hold the pinhole so that it's adjacent to the edge of the scale and I start with the left side of the pinhole against one side of a millimeter line and I estimate how many diameters that's about five and a half diameters in one millimeter that enables me to measure the diameter of the pinhole with a pretty good degree of precision and then I backlight the pinhole with a light behind it and I'm able to inspect the pinhole to see how round it is and uniform it is. Um, if it's uniform and if it's near the diameter that I want, then I call it good. If it has burrs inside the hole, then I need to clean the, the burrs up. So if there were any burrs, what I would do is I take my pin and I barely touch it inside the hole 
and very gently just give it a little bit of turning with hardly any pressure at all. And then I re-inspect it under the magnifying glass to see how uniform it is. So we've um, been able to create a pinhole here in a thin piece of brass of approximately the right size. If when you're in the process of doing this, you might find that it's an iterative process. In other words, you might find the pinhole looks nice and round and uniform, but it's just a little too small. And what you want to do in that case is you want to get a softer material like a thin piece of cardboard and go ahead and very slightly uh, put a little bit more pressure and make a slightly wider pinhole. Again, after doing that, you're going to want to sand down the burrs on the front side of the pinhole with your emery paper and then you're going to want to inspect it under the magnifying glass for any burrs and if it's non-uniform of course you're going to want to clean the pinhole out very softly putting the needle in from the front side and then uh, re-sanding sometimes helps on the emery. It's an iterative process as you make the hole slightly wider to approach the ideal size you want and getting it nice and round and uniform. And once you get it close, the general principle is that perfect is the enemy of good enough. If you think I can make it a little bit too, a little bit closer, you'll probably overshoot and make it too big. So if you get close enough and it's uniform and round, call it good.